Hello everyone. In this module, we are going to discuss uh, a different solution concept for normal form games. And this is called the correlated strategy and the equilibrium concept is called the correlated equilibrium. So before we begin uh, discussing uh, what is a correlated strategy and equilibrium, let us quickly recap what uh, we learned in the previous modules. So we discussed about uh, the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium which was the weakest notion of equilibrium that we have discussed so far. The, the idea was that uh, the previous notions of equilibrium might not exist in a normal form game. And therefore we have uh, come to this uh, MSNE uh, where existence is guaranteed by the Nash's theorem. But we have also noticed that uh, the, the computation of uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is very expensive. So uh, in this uh, uh, notion, uh, we, uh, we are actually going to look at some of those games where uh, a complete non-cooperative setting is not really meaningful. So for instance, uh, we have discussed the, the football and cricket game to friends and deciding uh, which game to play together. Uh, so uh, if you are thinking about the mixed strategy in Ash equilibrium, uh, what does it say? It says that you uh, randomize independent of the other player. So you pick uh, football with probability uh, two third if you if you uh, like that more and one third you pick cricket and the other player uh, does the other way around and then uh, it may it may also uh, be possible that you end up uh, choosing football and your friend uh, chooses cricket. Now, is that how uh, really uh, the 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 interaction of agents happen? Uh, possibly not. Uh, perhaps both the friends sit together and decide, well, today we are going to play football, maybe tomorrow we will play cricket. So that is exactly what uh, we are going to capture using the correlated strategy. So this is an alternative approach. And uh, here uh, what we have is a mediating device. So let's say um, uh, you do not uh, collaboratively decide uh, which game to play, you and your friend, rather you just toss a coin and decide that if, if it is heads, then you will play football, if it is tails, you will play cricket. So you give all the whole responsibility of choosing a joint strategy profile of both these players uh, by, by, uh, by the outcome of that device. And that is exactly the idea of a, a correlated strategy. So uh, why is that, that kind of a correlated strategy required? Uh, the, the first reason is that you have an alternative explanation for player rationality. So let's say I have uh, this, this kind of a rationality, I know that if I pick my strategies independently, uh, then um, there, there is a small amount of, actually a positive amount of probability uh, that uh, we will choose different games and uh, we'll both get uh, zero payoff. Maybe a rational being will actually try to uh, in, uh, incorporate some kind of a device like a, a coin toss and uh, whatever be the outcome that will, uh, that will be chosen and uh, will show that uh, that is going to be better uh, for, I mean it, it is kind of self enforcing for, for both these agents to follow uh, that, uh, that device outcome. The second uh, reason why we go in uh, this uh, correlated approach is that uh, utility for all the players uh, will get better. So if you choose the, the correlated strategy carefully or the correlated equilibrium carefully, then the utility, the expected utility that you will get uh, from a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium uh, and what you will get, get in the correlated equilibrium, uh, the, the outcome, the, the utility at correlated equilibrium will be higher. And the third point is of course for uh, computational tractability. We will see that uh, uh, the, uh, the correlated equilibrium is much easier to compute than uh, the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So here is a classic example uh, to, to motivate the, the uh, correlated equilibrium. So this is a, a situation where you have a, a busy crossroad and there are two uh, cars maybe who are coming. We are calling them player one and player two. They are uh, heading towards this junction and uh, now they have a choice, either one of them wait, the other passes, um, uh, both of them wait or both of them pass. Now uh, this, uh, this matrix on the left hand side is actually showing what is the utility that you will get uh, if uh, one of these uh, choices are uh, taken. So if both of them are waiting then of course they don't have any uh, damage but uh, uh, what they will also not get any 
uh, positive utility because uh, uh, they are waiting and they are not able to reach to their destination. Now, let's for for the sake of uh, explanation, if uh, player one goes and the the other guy and uh, player two is waiting, then actually uh, player one gets a little higher payoff, uh, of course, and player two still gets some positive payoff because now it knows that uh, once player uh, player one has passed. It is. It will be player two's time to to pass. Therefore, it is, and the utility is a little larger than if both of them were waiting. And the uh, uh, the symmetrically opposite thing happens when uh, the other player, uh, the player one is waiting and player two is going. But if both of them go, then they will crash into each other, and that will give them a very large negative uh, payoff. Now, uh, it is instructive to uh, look at what is the Nash equilibrium of this game. Uh, so I'll, I'll uh, leave that as an exercise. Compute what is the Nash equilibrium, uh, the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Um, you can see that there are two pure strategy uh, by by inspection itself. So both go and wait uh, for one uh, player and wait and go. Both are uh, uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium. But you can also see that uh, there is a uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium uh, which is different from this, and that uh, quite interestingly gives uh, some probability. Uh, on on this uh, go and go situation so there is a chance if you are completely uncoordinated uh, you might uh, run into each other and get a very large negative payoff so uh, the and what are the other um, uh, characteristics of that uh, nash solution the mixed strategy nash yeah, you can see that uh, they, they have a large probability on the waiting time so uh, if you find um, uh, uh, the the weight for both these players will have a very large mass so most of the time they will be waiting which gives them very little payoff there is a small probability that they will both go and uh, crash into each other and the rest of the probability is distributed that one goes and the other uh, waits but uh, this is not reasonable in this context because that's not how uh, we actually uh, play this game uh, the cars do not go in that way so in practice what happens is you have a device and which is called the traffic light or maybe the traffic police. This uh, individual or, or the device is actually guiding these players and uh, uh, the players actually agree whenever uh, such a plan is given. So if the traffic uh, police is saying that uh, uh, car one stop and car two go, then both these players have incentive to follow that instruction. And why is that uh, true? We'll discuss uh, formally in this uh, in this module. Now, so this uh, trusted third party, the, the traffic light or the traffic police, is what is called the mediator. This is the word that we'll be using very often. Now, what is the role of this mediator? Uh, it is actually going to randomize over the strategy profiles. Uh, now, uh, notice that it is no longer randomizing over individual strategies. Strategy. Uh, sets. So in the uh, in the mixed strategy uh, uh, scenario, uh, each of these individuals were having their own randomizing device, and they were uh, uh, taking taking the decisions based on that outcome of that randomizing device, and they were doing it independently. The correlated part comes in the uh, um, brings in that uh, um, that both these players can now randomize together. So this is why this uh, the mediator is actually not randomizing over individual strategies but on strategy profiles so it is actually giving uh, so it is actually randomizing over s1 and s2 together and suggesting one of these actions to uh, each of these players player one and player two now uh, we will will see that uh, the strategies are enforceable and uh, uh, if that is that uh, that is true, then we'll call those uh, those enforceable strategies as the uh, the correlated equilibrium. So we'll make all this formal very soon. So what is a correlated strategy? So let me go over this slowly uh, because this idea is uh, subtly different from what is what we have discussed so far. So imagine uh, a mapping uh, function. So this is sort of uh, the uh, the device uh, which is running this uh, function, this uh, mapping, it is taking the S. So S is the, the Cartesian product of all strategies. If you want to write it, S is nothing but the S1 
cross S2 up to Sn. So this is the, uh, the complete strategy profile uh, set for all the players. Now it is picking from one of them. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, it is randomizing over all those strategy profiles. Uh, and uh, therefore, this pi s, when you are summing over all strategy profiles, it must be equal to 1. So that is the correlated strategy. So it is not a strategy for one player. Rather, it's a, uh, it's a strategy uh, for that randomizing device or maybe it's, it's the uh, strategy of the mediator. So uh, to give you an example in, in this uh, wait and go game, you can think of that uh, uh, this randomizing device will not put any probability mass on both being waiting and both uh, going. Uh, so in, the, in that uh, expression, uh, on these two outcomes, it is putting zero uh, probability. It is putting half and half weight on this uh, go weight and wait go. This is a uh, correlated strategy. You can think of any other kind of mass. I mean, there are uncountably many uh, possibilities there. Now, uh, we also need to talk about what is enforceable. So how can we say that people will actually follow this once uh, this randomization device gives some outcome and it is suggested to each of these players, what is, uh, uh, what is uh, kind of enforceable? So we will call a correlated strategy to be a correlated equilibrium here, when no player will gain from uh, deviating uh, when the other players are actually following the suggested strategy. So imagine, uh, uh, go, go back to our running example. So uh, we know if, uh, uh, suppose the traffic police is going to randomize between go wait and wait go uh, for these two uh, players, uh, tossed a coin and decided one of these two outcomes and uh, given the signals to for player one to go, should player to deviate and uh, not wait and, uh, and also start moving. Uh, so uh, that's clearly not true because it knows that player one uh, is rational. So therefore, it will uh, it will actually try to find its expected utility if uh, if it follows the instruction versus if it does not follow the instruction. Uh, so if it does not follow the instruction, then it knows that uh, player one has been given a signal to go. Therefore, uh, player two, if it starts moving, then it will just crash into the other one which will give, uh, give it a significantly less payoff. So maybe it is not really meaningful. Now, we are going to make uh, that thing formal using this uh, notion of correlated equilibrium. So just to uh, mention that this pi, so whenever you have decided who is the mediator and what is his mediating strategy or the correlated strategy, that becomes a common knowledge. So. Uh, everybody knows that uh, uh, this is the randomizing device. So the, the traffic police is going to toss a coin every time. Half the time it will ask a player one to go, half the time it will ask player two to go. So that's, that's common knowledge. So we are going to call uh, a correlated strategy pi to be a correlated equilibrium if the following thing happens. And now this, this is a bit of an expression. So uh, let me go over this uh, slowly. So notice that uh, whenever the, the, uh, the device is randomizing over the strategies, uh, no player has any control over it. So this randomizing device is only randomizing over the A size and S minus size for all the players and uh, player uh, uh, 1 or player 2 cannot change, any of the players cannot change this randomization. What they can change is what, they, uh, what the action they, that they take. So in this, uh, in this uh, inequality, we are writing it uh, from the point of view of player i. So uh, imagine that uh, this uh, strategy, so um, uh, if the randomization device has selected one random outcome, and suppose that random outcome is SIS minus i, as shown here, and it has uh, suggested both these players, these strategies. So if player i follows that strategy and all the other players also follow that strategy, uh, then um, uh, this is the utility that player i will get and uh, uh, this uh, this outcome si comma s minus i that happens with probability pi of si s minus i and you uh, now take the sum so expectation so if everybody else so uh, player i only observes that uh, i have been suggested si it does not know uh, what has been suggested to other people maybe it can guess but it uh, it is not certain 
So it has to take an expectation over all the other strategies for all the other players. Right? So that is going to give him the expected utility. So this term will give the expected utility to player i uh, when he has been suggested strategy si. Now um, agent i may think, well, so let's let's try out some other strategy, si prime. Uh, don't follow the uh, the recommendation that has been given by the mediator. Let's try doing something else. So all that changes is uh, uh, the the strategy profile, and that will uh, potentially change the utility of agent i. But that will still continue. the The device has actually uh, decided the outcome with a with a given probability. So. Uh, this uh, uh, the the argument of this function will not change. Now you are going to take the same expectation. So this is the expectation uh, uh, of uh, of player i, the expected utility of player i, uh, when he has been suggested si, but he is playing si prime, right? So and this inequality is saying that you do not do not gain by doing so, and it is true for all si si primes uh, and uh, for all players. I in M. And if the, this holds, then it is going to be a correlated equilibrium. That is the, that is the definition. So let us try to understand this uh, using, uh, using a few examples. So just uh, let me make a remark that uh, uh, whenever the mediator suggests these actions after running its randomizing device, pi, so this is just pi, uh, no subscripts. Uh, every agent's best response is to follow it uh, if uh, if the other players are also following it. Essentially, uh, that can be so. This definition of correlated equilibrium can be spelled out in words uh, in this manner. So let us look at uh, one example uh, to to appreciate this uh, this point. Let us look at our uh, favorite example of uh, football and cricket game. Which, uh, so you know uh, uh, if you, uh, the from the previous exercises that uh, the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium in this context is two third one third uh, for player one. So uh, player one will take this two third and one third, and for the other player it's one third and two third. Whoever li likes which which game, the, uh, the the player will put more mass on that. Now um, let's consider a, a correlated strategy. So now the correlated strategy comes uh, uh, as a randomization over the strategy profile and not on individual players. So c comma c is half. So both players choosing uh, c comma c and also both players choosing uh, football is uh, is given probability half. Uh, let us uh, look at whether it is a uh, correlated equilibrium or not. So maybe you can pause this video, do the exercise using the uh, using the definition. So now let us look at what happens here. So if we if we go back, so what is the probability of s i s minus i? So in this case, um, the uh, s i s minus i have only two possibilities. Imagine that uh, we are considering for player i. Uh, has been suggested uh, to uh, to play f okay so let's say si is is f and therefore si prime uh, is c that is the only thing that we need to consider because for the other case uh, it is actually following the strategy so this uh, inequality will get satisfied with equality so player i has been so player one let's say so si is player one so s1 is uh, chosen is given the uh, the instruction of playing f. Now, if you look at the left hand side, what will be the, the utility? So, you know that the, the probability, uh, because pi is a common knowledge, f comma f is half. So, your first pi f comma f that you will have to uh, look at and the corresponding the utility of player 1 when he is playing f, the other player is also following that uh, instruction. This is uh, something that I am write, writing on the, uh, which will be on the left hand side, and f comma c, uh, the other player has the other, uh, uh, other uh, choice c, and here also you have f comma c. Okay? So now you know that this is going to be zero, and this is also zero. So therefore, all that you uh, really need to look at is um, is this probability which is half. And u1 of f comma f is 2. So this uh, factor comes out to be 1. Now, uh, what would have happened if player 1 was uh, picking this uh, strategy of c? 
Uh, so all this uh, would have changed is this one will become C and this will also become C. So uh, and but the but the uh, the the probability masses wouldn't change. And now you know that this is going to be zero. So here I am trying to argue on the right hand side. Uh, so for the right hand side, you know that this is going to be zero. Uh, and when you put c comma f, this utility itself for player uh, one becomes zero. So on the right hand side, you have zero. So this is clearly true for player one. So one is greater than zero. Now you can also do this, a very similar exercise for player two because uh, it's, it's a symmetric game. You will have a very similar outcome here. So clearly, this uh, this uh, uh, correlated strategy, where uh, uh, the mediator is giving half probability to C C and F F, that is a correlated equilibrium. You can also think about: Do there exist other kind of uh, correlated equilibrium? Uh, you can you can just uh, uh, think about some some other kind of uh, correlated uh, strategies and whether they are. Maybe you can just arbitrarily pick some correlated uh, uh, strategies and uh, see whether that is a correlated equilibrium or not. If it is not, why it is not? Now, in this uh, correlated equilibrium, you can find out the expected utility. Uh, you can see that uh, the uh, calculated, you will find that the MSNE will give you two thirds of uh, utility for, uh, for both these players, while uh, a correlated equilibrium will give you a much larger. Uh, utility for both these players. So it is clearly true that when people coordinate, they might uh, collectively do a little better thing, and that is uh, that is another form of rationality. Uh, so let's go to the uh, to the other example, the weight go example. Uh, you can so let's consider this uh, equilibrium, uh, this uh, uh, mixed uh, the uh, correlated uh, strategy. And the question is, uh, so what it is doing, it is uh, putting one third mass on this strategy profile, this strategy profile and this strategy profile. Now, you, you can do it, I am not going to do it uh, again uh, and you will see that this is a, a correlated equilibrium. So the question is, are there other correlated equilibrium, also try to find out. Uh, one natural uh, thing that we have already discussed is putting half probability mass here and half here. Uh, check that whether that is a correlated equilibrium or not. Uh, can there be any kind of a correlated equilibrium uh, which gives positive mass on this go and go? Let's see now whether that is that is true or not. Uh, 